If you're a content creator or someone who's looking to get into producing videos, the goal should always be to make better videos. And today I'm going to show you some ways that you can do that and even better for free. So stick around. Hello, hello, and welcome to DS Tech Media. My name is Jay, and DS Tech Media is all about tech, everything from gaming to servers, hardware to software, specializing in Linux and open source software. Today, I'm going to be showing you simple concepts and techniques that you can use to make better videos. So if you're not familiar with DS Tech Media, I make videos entirely using Linux and free and open source software. So a lot of my footage is just screen recording and myself talking into a camera, much like I'm doing right now. And one way to increase production value is use images and graphics, etc., and so forth. And a big part of how I do that is with OBS Studio, which is a entirely free and open source project. Another thing that I highly recommend is gathering notes and links and putting them into a script ahead of time. This is something that I haven't even recorded yet for Android 12. I've gathered a ton of notes. That way I can kind of make sure it makes it into the video. A very important thing to account for is your audio. Sometimes people overlook this, but having good audio is absolutely key. In my earlier videos, I had a lot of servers running in the room with me, a lot of different computers, and that noise could be heard as the background of the video. And I've addressed that in a lot of different ways. The best way to do so is to remove the sound from the room to begin with. That way you're not editing the video and trying to process sound out of your video clips. That's kind of a reoccurring theme. You can do work at the time of or before recording, or you can spend more time in editing. There's like a give take relationship. For instance, I used OBS to composite in the OBS logo and the picture of the notes. I did all that in real time while I'm recording this, but it could make sense to just add that sort of stuff in after the fact. As I mentioned before, a lot of what I do involves capturing the screen. And so adding graphics or logos for software, or different topics is an easy way just to switch things up depending on the topic of the video i'll usually go online and grab images or logos things that i want to add to the video the best thing to do is to find svg files which stands for scalable vector graphics it'll give you a lot more options when it comes to resizing or changing anything about the graphics and this program is called inkscape an alternative to adobe's illustrator and here I have an SVG, can move it around or adjust size, but more importantly, move any element because this isn't just an image, it is a graph. So all of this is selectable and manipulatable. Every little piece of this, I can change the colors. We could do lots of different things with this. What we really want is something more simple of like server racks and I got an Intel logo here. So one of the little changes that I might want to do is I like to use some uh, shadowing to make the logo pop a little bit more. Go ahead and export this. As you can see, the Intel logo just stands out a little bit because of simply adding those shadows. Before I even go about making a video, I'll gather graphics or I'll make them myself. Speaking of OBS, I just want to demo some of the things and how they work. So we're uh, capturing a window there. That's what this is. As I said earlier, we have this effect, the OBS logo, and this one for 
my markdown application and everything such as the logo even the boxes with the shadowing for my camera sources i used inkscape to make and we can get staged and complicated as we want and save some time uh, in editing just some of the things that you can do with Inkscape and OBS. All right, now we're gonna get to the heart of the video, which is editing. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is a fundamental of video editing, cuts. But a technique often used in filmmaking and by professionals is the J cut. So what is a J cut? A uh, J cut is any cut where the second scene's audio precedes the video. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and give you an example. Last thing to do, I guess, is test it out. So very little fuss. The only thing you're really going to be mucking with is the audio. I applied a fade Last thing to do, I guess, is test it out. in for the J cuts audio. And alternatively, you can also do the opposite, which is known as an L cut and much like you would expect. All right, so first impressions. So there we have the L cut and one more cut should definitely get mentioned is the match cut. And what you're doing is you're lining up your two clips so that they have a sort of match in the frames. The simplest practical example I can give is this one. So here we go. And a little bit. So if you notice, I go to turn the camera off. And upon cutting to the next scene, turning the camera on, so we get that uh, juxtaposition there. Those are three very simple and very effective ways of cutting without going through the trouble of a fade or a wipe. So we've already touched on using images to enhance video. Very similar to images would be titles. So this is Caden Live and it has a built-in title maker. Also, by the way, this city scene is actually just free stock footage and inside of Caden Live, we can actually grab stock footage like this. So I just did a, a search over here for city at night. Here we go, this one will let you preview. And this is free footage from Pexels video. So you don't need to have Kaden Live to get this. You can just go to the Pexels website and search. You can enhance the project you're working on if you need some kind of footage and you don't have it in your own archives. You can use these sites to add it to your project. You want to be certain to check for a license attribution and all that. The places that Caden Live has are Pexels videos, Pexels photos, internet archive movies, free sound and Pixabay photos. So back to this city scene, I added this title here and we're doing a basic uh, fade wipe in and a fade wipe out. And it's just a very nice looking uh, scene. And in this one, there is a gradual blur that occurs to the city. And in this one, we're kind of animating the appearance of the text. And you can do that with, uh, this is a simple compositor in Caden Live called Composite and Transform. Just about any video editor should have something like this. And once again, for the background, I used the box blur. The other effect, a uh, vignette effect that is without it and that is with it. And you can use vignettes for uh, bringing focus to the center of a clip. And let's say I really wanted to set this off and maybe add some audio. We can go back over here, go to free sound. I think we can work with this one. Let's go ahead and import it. So it is now downloading. Mm -hmm. 
also just using free resources and doing the title clip we're able to get a pretty good little sequence going on here so keeping up with the theme of using visual elements uh, we're going to switch over to the Flowblade video editor. This is a project I did about Markdown and I went to the Markdown Wikipedia page and took a screenshot. But then I also highlighted this developer's photo and I screenshotted that as well. And using Inkscape, I put them together and gave this an outline with shadowing so it would stand out. I also added a vignette and used the transform compositor to, to give it some motion so it's not just an image anymore. Created the Markdown language in 2004 in collaboration with Aaron Schwartz on the syntax. And Aaron Schwartz was an American computer programmer. So using a screenshot, another screenshot, very basic resources and placed above Wikipedia screenshot, adding the shadows from the vignette effect. But the most important part is actually the uh, transforming of the image. So we've got X, Y, and Z axes. And as we move in, the image zooms and then it rotates and then it rotates on the other axis. And this is an effect you'll see in a lot of videos. And it's just a way to add just something nice to look at to an otherwise kind of dull narration piece. So once again, creating something out of nothing. So another example, in this project, I had recorded fireworks on the 4th of July. And I knew I wanted to use the fireworks footage, but didn't really know where else to go from there. I ended up doing a search for U.S. flag. I found this uh, U.S. flag, and it happened to be perfect because of this solid blue background, because we can easily chroma key that part out. Using the basic chroma key, Selecting that color, we immediately remove a bunch of the flag. And then we can adjust the variance to bring back the parts that are missing. Select compositors, Let's composite and transform. So we can lower the opacity, resize it. But we've also got a ton of different blends. So change the blend type XOR this is plus with multiply you can vaguely see the flag that one's screen darken uh, color dodge color burn the hard light is perfect because the fireworks footage is at night and the hard light kind of gives it that night look so that one is pretty ideal oh that one's the soft light difference where it's performing a division of the two images where these bright colors are happening here is exclusion which is also pretty cool it almost makes it seem like the fireworks are over top the flag these are fundamental compositing options and when it comes to layering, if you know the correct sequence to overlay a few images and compositors, you can get a lot of really cool effects. Uh, another compositor I used was Cairo Blend. It has its own parameters. Add, saturate, multiply, screen, overlay. Like this one, which is HSL uh, Luminosity get some pretty cool effects this way but here is some of my actual footage from the project and in this one you used the HSL luminosity and then it kind of transfers into a hard light effect and then even into a stronger hard light effect and this one I zoom out to put the flag into the full frame. 
you know, I had a piece of footage. I used Kaden Live to grab the flag footage and simply using chroma key, Cairo blend, or composite and transform, I was able to achieve what I think is pretty decent rendering, honestly. Just stock footage and compositors. So another look at compositors here. Specifically, I'm using Flowblades compositors, and I've got a bunch of them here. I've got a blend compositor, a screen compositor, transform, and in this particular footage of uh, my GoPro with the Rode microphone, and we do a wipe into the Caden Live logo being screened over top of it. And it's it's Caden Live logo blowing like a flag then goes away and this footage here is actually just a screen recording I did of Google Earth and is blending with the microphone footage from below. So this is overlay, this is screen, uh, this is add, darken, lighten, color burn, color dodge, hard light, difference, exclusion, HSL hue, saturation, and basically just going through all of the uh, different ones there. And we're able to get a pretty cool looking composite of both videos present. And over here, we have a whole mess of compositors stacked above one another. As I zoomed in on Google Earth and the resolution became clear, there's more colors. And I set it up to wipe the logo in as that's happening. And you get this really cool effect. We get over here, we've got a lighten blend of the logo above a color dodge blend of the Google Earth. And we get this composite in. I added some effects here and did some really interesting things. Uh, it's, it's sort of like a math equation, except with color. And I ended up using a color clip to do this part. But if you notice, as the text passes over uh, different parts of the Google Earth footage, the pink becomes green. And that's because in reality, the text itself is green. We've got an HSL luminosity blend there. And that is a difference. And on top of it all, we've got this color clip. And the color clip is actually like a beige. So when we stack all these things together we end up with this. And this is just an example of how the blend compositor is doing a difference calculation with the color versus the colors of the video behind it. And all I used to do this was ice cream recorded just me messing around in Google Earth. And the, the text that's streaming down over the image here is a terminal I captured and I used chroma key to add the text over the Google Earth footage. So it, it's like the matrix text streaming down over the Google Earth footage. And I, I thought it looked pretty cool, you know, just capturing the Google Earth footage alone and adding things over top of it. also added this song which I I produced as well so yeah there's uh, just a few ways you can use compositors to do some really cool things it's basically nothing some random clips I had some footage that I recorded on the computer I mean anyone could do this you know free software uh, you can get creative with video editing without buying fancy gear as long as your computer can run a video editor okay so now we're going to talk a little bit about color because of the way that i film my videos i don't do any color correction because it simply doesn't make sense for how i film working with color is a science of its own but we're going to be looking at a cheat sheet or a simpler way with something called LUTs or lookup tables. There's two 
types of LUTs, one dimensional, which uniformly apply a transformation to a photo or video in the red, green, or blue color space. And then there's 3D LUTs. 3D LUTs apply a more complicated transition because the way that it is done is in a cube. And this is why 3D LUT files are called .cube files. So I have a piece of footage here and I have a bunch of different 3D LUT packs and this is Remy 24. That's with it off, that's with it on. And you can see that there is a change in color. If I add some brightness, it'll become a little more apparent. This is footage that I shot using a GoPro. This is Fusion 88 kind of cool that one's neon 770 lucky 64 also if i move the brightness above or below the lut it has a dramatic effect because luts also include luminosity in their process if i already have a brightness effect applied it will change the variables and the output image because of the brightness of each pixel corbin 214 that's without that's with kind of warms it up let's go to a different uh lut set this one is vibrant cold this one is bright all of these are entirely free LUTs that I downloaded online. These ones are supposed to give you color according to different movies. Uh, this one's called The Matrices, which is obviously a play on The Matrix. This is Saving Private Damon, Saving Private Ryan color look. Uh, Moonrise, Apocalypse This Very Moment, and I actually do like the way that this one looks. I think it gives a very cinematic feel. Okay, so this one is FG Cinna Teal and Orange, and I actually really like the way this one looks. This one's for drama, and this one is really just supposed to raise the uh, depth of your shadows. LUTs are an easy way to dramatically change the appearance of your footage, so it's definitely a cool tool to have in the arsenal. Definitely something to look at. And there... You have it, a few things that you can do to add value to your video that are very, very simple. Anyone can use these. Of course, I'm doing it on Linux, but if you're on Windows or Mac, the same should apply. There's nothing really exotic about any of the tools I used, and I hope I described it and showed it good enough that you got something out of it or at least felt inspired to do something on your own. This wasn't exactly a tutorial, but more of an ideas video, and let me know if I got the point across to you. And guys, if you did like the video, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you want more content like this, if you're interested in Linux or tech, I produce videos regularly and we could always use help growing this channel. So hit the subscribe button. I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Be sure to check us out on all the alternative video sites and on my other social media accounts. And you can find the links to all that in the description below. For DS Tech Media, I'm Jay. And I'll see you in the next one.